Warm Homes Clean Air Project, which started out in about 2004-2005. It also serves to show how this project has transitioned and evolved, evolved over time. There are currently two air sheds in the South Waikato that do not comply with the NES AQ, which is the Tokoroa and the Taro air sheds. However, this presentation will focus almost entirely on the Tokoroa air shed, that is, as it is deemed the worst offending air shed in the region and continues to be the focus of funding via council specific schemes and um, funding from other organizations such as the Waikato Regional Council and Central Government, (IPA). Research and statistics tell us that the Pataro air shed will meet the NES um, deadline without any intervention. In 2004, the government introduced the National Environment Standards for Air Quality. One of the standards focused on ensuring a set, of, a set level of protection for human health for five toxins, including particulate matter no less than 10 micrometers in diameter, otherwise referred to as PM10. The standard for PM10 emissions is an average of 50 micrograms uh, per cubic meter over a 24-hour period. Concentrations greater than this are considered to be in exceedance. As a result of the above, the Warm Homes Clean Air Steering Committee was established. Stakeholders include council, regional council, a range of social, social service providers like South Waikato, Pacific Island Community Services, Rock Power Trust, Tokoro Council of Social Services, Central Government, and uh, representatives from the local retailers, um, realtors, and work and income New Zealand. PM10 can adversely impact health, um, including reduced activity of individuals and premature death. Some population groups are more susceptible to the, air, the effects of air pollution. These include the elderly, people whose health is already compromised, um, particularly those with any respiratory or cardiovascular illnesses. And the implications from this can be people missing um, school, missing work, increased hospitalization or visits to the, the doctors, ongoing social costs um, that impact the family and the taxpayer. Research indicates that the polluted air sheds in the Waikato region, the Taro and Tok, particularly in <coughs> there are about over 15,000 restricted days that stated where people either miss work or with school due to air pollution. To, to see what kind of impact that is, that represents about 68 full-time equivalent days in which Tokoroa airship. <coughs> that represents the equivalent of 68 full-time employees where the Tokoroa airship contributes to significant one. So that's, that's a pretty significant number. The Ministry for the Environment funded a pilot program um, to test wood burner emissions. The results was that the replacement of non-compliant burners with compliant burners can contribute to a significant reduction in air pollution and also highlighted the importance of burning only dry firewood. Regional Council's air emission inventory in 2007 showed that over 2,100 households used wood burners, 213 households used open fires, over 300 households use multi-fuel burners, and almost half of the wood burners in Tokoroa are wood burners installed prior to 1997, so non-compliant wood burners. All of these findings um, provided the basis for the funding of, of the project going forward, which was the ESWAP for the Clean Air Project. The initial funding for this program focused entirely on insulation, and the Council rolled out the insulation program with the Warm Homes Clean Air Steering Committee group leading the way in 2007-2008. The initial focus of this group was to raise the awareness of health benefits of insulated homes and the health effects of poor air quality. In 2009, central government funding focused on low-income households where the intention was to retrofit um, approximately 188,000 homes in four years nationally. In 2010, the Council moved away from funding insulation, uh, which came about from Emily Wilton's report that researched the best <coughs> method of reducing PM10 concentrations in Tokoroa uh, was to achieve compliance with the NES standards. Wilton's research showed that clean heat conversions would be more effective at reducing PM10 emissions than funding the insulation of, of, than funding the installation of insulation. As a result, the Council changed the funding to target 
clean heating, and not insulation. Close to 700 homes were insulated with Tokoroa significantly benefiting from this funding. In 2011, the National Stand Environmental Standards Review changed Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, the National Standards, Environment Standards Reviews changed in 2009 and were set in 2011 and to date are the goals that we're working towards achieving. Uh, councils were made aware of those changes. Uh, those changes were during the draft bylaw for air quality presentation. On the 1st of July 2013, Council introduced a rate incentive scheme called Heat Swap. Its focus was to replace non-compliant heating appliances with compliant ones. This was partially bundled by central government to install insulation and decommission the non-compliant burners. Council paid the remaining amount with the homeowner paying the full cost of this amount over a nine-year period via the rating system. In 2011-12, 33 homes were converted to clean heating via the fully subsidized program, previously known as Warm Homes Clean Air funded by Council and Regional Council. In addition, 32 homes received clean heating via Council's rate incentive schemes. In 2012, um, the same research, Emily Wilkins' research, stated that the largest source of PM10 in the Tokoro airshed was domestic heating, it's 86% was contributed by domestic heating, followed by transport, which was only 7%. In 2012, 54 homes were converted to clean heating via council and regional council funding, and 77 homes were converted to clean heating via the heat swap, council's rate incentive scheme. There was a, a good news story that um, did come up in, uh, from one of the uh, recipients of this program, and it was a Pacific Island, Pacific Island family of five, with some two young parents and three children, where two of their children had asthma and an open fire was removed from the home and a heat pump was installed. All three children are now actively engaged in physical activity in and outside of the home and they have experienced less visits to the GP and no, no overnight hospitalization for asthma for any of the children. So, I don't know. Thanks for the success story. In February, council's response to the draft clean air bylaw was um, um, three, in three areas. The proposed bylaw will lie on table with action by future council within a two year time frame. Number two, council staff will be encouraged to continue developing the Goodwood Supplier Scheme, similar to the Nelson Tasman, and extend it to both commercial and charitable wood suppliers. And the third point was council will continue to work with the Waikato Regional Council to improve air quality. In July 2012-13, 71 homes were converted to clean heating via council and regional council funding. In 2014, as a result of, of council's discussions and decision making, some, yes, some significant changes were made to eligibility for the Warm Homes Clean Air Program. Potential warm air home clean air homeowners no longer needed to hold a community services card, but will have need to have received a rates rebate within the past two years to be eligible. Insulation will be encouraged, and homeowners will need to be registered for insulation through central government's initiatives, where the majority of the insulation is fully subsidized, but is, does not have to be in place prior to clean heating appliances being installed on the property. And the program will remain as a 100% subsidy for Tokoro homes, with non-compliant heating sources. Your decision to approve these changes has reduced the barriers to people signing up for the schemes. And in 2013-2014, we now had 69 homes converted to clean heating via these schemes. And 14 homes convert to clean heating via Council's uh, great incentive schemes. Another good news story was that there was an elderly gentleman that suffered from emphysema and he was able to have his non-compliant uh, wood burner removed and heat pump installed. His wife is now able to better care for his needs without worrying about chopping wood, storing it, and carting it. And their home maintains a nice even temperature days and day and night, which allows this, um, this couple to um, maintain <coughs> better health requirements and health needs. In 2015, um, there, oh, sorry, 
Um, staff are currently working towards a partnership agreement with regional council focusing on improving air quality in Tokoroa. This agreement will build on the great work that staff are already doing together and will clarify our roles and responsibilities going forward to ensure that air quality improvements remain the focus of the program. In 2014-15, 83 homes converted to clean heating via council and regional council schemes, and 12 homes converted to clean heating via council's rates incentive scheme. And, uh, sorry. And the summary page. <coughs> There's been a rebrand branding of all of the um, current offers, um, which the uh, brochures are in front of you. It is uh, funding for on post, split the bill, and split the bill schemes. And they are almost fully allocated, and um, in terms of funding and contingency measures are being discussed. There has been a further exceedance report on the 12th of August 2015, which brings the total of 10 exceedances to us for this year. And I understand that uh, John from Caldwell will be making a presentation September the 10th to to walk you through some of the, uh, the um, technical research on those exceedances. Central government has been one of the funders um, in this program from 2009 to... Uh, in, from 2006 to 2015, this slide shows that all funders, across all funders and all programs during this period, we have impacted over 1,400 homes. If you use a calculation based on four people living in each home, you can see that we are talking close to 5,700 um, individuals. involving your neighbors, your family, your friends, or your work colleagues, the majority of whom would not be able to have a warmer, a drier, or more comfortable home if council had not yet made the decision back in 2007 to begin the great work that has contributed to the community in some form today. Imagine these, that these families would not take part, part in activities that would be excluded them to a great extent had the um, funding not been in place. Having your grandchildren come and stay because we're able to provide a warm and comfortable environment for them. The reality is that many of these families, that there are many barriers, and your decision back then has given them one less barrier to worry about. If compliance in Tokoroa was achieved, the average life expectancy would be likely to increase by five to seven months per person, and an estimated one in 20 people would live 11 years longer in Tokoroa. Central government has been one of the funders from June 2009 to March 2015, and they have insulated over 2,000 homes in the South Waikato area via the Warm Up New Zealand Healthy Home Scheme, with uh, over 1,200 of those being low-income homes. This, uh, this slide shows the, the funder contributions, and, and council has invested um, staggering 1.3, almost 1.4 million dollars within our community to improve the lives of our most vulnerable persons. Of course, we would not have been able to do this without the generosity of all of our funding partners today. Summary of the scheme since July the 1st, 2015, so just uh, less than six months ago, on the house, 23 homes have allocated funding, split the bill, 40 homes have signed up, and the Buy Now Pay Later scheme, eight homes have signed up. Um, as I mentioned earlier, on the house and the split the bill schemes are almost fully allocated and contingency measures um, are being discussed in terms of what we can do going forward. To summarize, this has been a journey from 2004 to the current day. And um, the question really is, you know, from a health perspective and from an economic viewpoint, have the inter interventions made any difference? And the answer to that is a, is a resounding yes. The bottom line is still well within the national environment standards for air quality. The 2020 um, deadline for air quality 2020 deadline 
We know that the um, 2020 deadline can be met, but the 2016 deadline cannot be met. And again, Jonathan Caldwell will take you through some of the uh, intricacies uh, around uh, our issues around the 2016 deadline.